Hello, everybody. Um, if you want to see some off-the-wall, in-your-face Satanism, I don't really feel like promoting it, but um, go to YouTube and type in uh, Swiss Tunnel Satanic Ceremony, or, you know, with those words, Swiss Tunnel Ceremony Satanic, you know, something like that. In uh, Switzerland, they opened a tunnel and they had all the, you know, big the big shots from Europe over there. I'm sure the U.S. was represented in some way or another. Maybe Hillary was there. I don't know. But they had a satanic ceremonies. I was like, man, that's not even in your, you know, that's in your face. Uh, the word occult means hidden. Well, I'm sorry, it's not the occult anymore. This Satanism's out in the open. It's in your face. So what can I tell you? But the name of this study, it's mostly going to be a commentary and some conjecture. Not so much a Bible study. There'll be a little bit of Bible, but the name of the study is Is CERN, C-E-R-N, Is CERN a Cause for Concern? Now, if you look in the descriptions below, I put some links and uh, copied some stuff from uh, CERN's homepage and uh, Wikipedia, I mean, I'm sorry, Wikipedia, I was right the first time, Wikipedia, W-I-C-K-E-D, uh, Pedia, and uh, so let's take a look, What what is CERN? I mean, I know that a lot of people have done stuff on CERN, and you know, but uh, I got kind of a, my own little theory, I'm not saying I'm right, and if you disagree, that's fine, because it's... You know, there's some things that seem to tie into the Bible, so let's take a look at uh, what the Bible says. All right. Um, according, according to um, home.cern backslash about, the name CERN, C-E-R-N, is derived from the acron ac acronym for the French Council European pour les... Uh, Retro nuclear. Sorry, I failed French in high school. I'm sorry. You know, actually, I took German, but you know, you get the point. Or European Council for Nuclear Research, a provisional body founded in 1952 with the mandate of establishing a world class fundamental physics research organization in Europe. At the time, pure physics research concentrated on understanding the inside of the atom, hence the word nuclear. Okay, so that's from CERN's website. Now, how about Wikipedia? Um, now, this is something interesting. Every time I do one of these, like, study kind of thingies, um, I always learn something new. So, you know, I like um, doing this kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's interesting some of the things you learn, especially when I start doing uh, Bible studies, but this is not so much a Bible study as it is a commentary on uh, what's going on. But this I did not know. The, uh, according to Wikipedia, their article on CERN, which I have the link, we read the following. The World Wide Web, the World Wide Web, the Internet, began as a CERN project named Enquire, initiated by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 and Robert Calliou in 1990. Now, the military in the United States also had like an internet that they were that they had been doing since the 60s so this isn't entirely CERN can't entirely take the credit for all this because I had a VIC-20 a Commodore VIC-20 computer in the 80s and I was on the internet but back then all it was was basically games it was nothing like what it is now I mean I was connected to Bell South and had a modem a 56k modem so I've been doing this stuff for 
quite a while, and I took uh, computer science and business when I was in uh, what is now called Palm Beach State College. And uh, so, yeah. So Berners-Lee and Cal IU were jointly honored by the Association for Computing Machinery in 1995 for their contributions to the development of the World Wide Web based on the concept of hypertext project was intended to facilitate sharing of information among researchers. The first website was activated in 1991. On 30 April 1993, CERN announced that the World Wide Web would be free to anyone. A copy of the original first web page created by Berners-Lee is still published on the World Wide Web Consortium's website as a historical document. Prior to the web's development, CERN had pioneered the development of Internet technology beginning in the early 80s. Now, that funny blue thing, uh, their logo of CERN, did you notice that it is three sixes, 666? Six, six, six? Isn't that interesting? So, Wikipedia um, says that Israel is the only non-European country granted full membership. Hmm, isn't that interesting? All right, so uh, let's see. If we go to home.cern backslash about slash fit backslash physics slash uh, backslash extra dimensions, gravitons, and tiny black holes, and I quote the following. Uh, let's see. Why is gravity so much weaker than the other fundamental forces? A small fridge magnet is enough to create electromagnetic magnetic force greater than the gravitational pull exerted by planet Earth. One possibility is that we don't feel the full effect of gravity because it spreads to extra dimensions. Ooh. Though it, sound, though it may sound like science fiction, if extra dimensions exist, they could explain why the Internet why the universe is expanding faster than expected and why gravity is weaker than the other forces of nature. A question of scale. In our everyday lives, we experience three spatial dimensions and a fourth dimension of time. How could there be more? All right, so that's the um, end of what uh, that... Uh, web page quoted okay now if you want you can go to the description page I've got links you can just click on the links read what it says you know read the whole page if you want to personally I think Bible reading the Bible is more important than reading all this kind of junk so let's go to the Bible is there four dimensions in the Bible you tell me turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians Chapter 3 and verse 4, starting at verse 14. Okay, Ephesians 3 and verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Did you catch that? Breadth, length, depth, height. Breadth, B-R-E-A-D-T-H, 1, length, L-E-N-G-T-H, 2, depth, 
D-E-P-T-H, 3, height, H-E-I-G-H-T, 4. Do you know that Paul just mentioned that there are four dimensions? Breadth, length, depth, and height. Paul says there's, there's four dimensions. Isn't that interesting? Is the fourth dimension a spiritual realm? Probably. I don't know. The Bible doesn't go into it with any detail. It just mentions, Paul just mentions that there is a fourth dimension. Now, the, um, okay, so on that blue CERN logo with the three sixes, uh, the next one is that funny looking statue of the thing with the four arms dancing. Um, that is, was donated to CERN by India, and uh, India is mostly Hindu, and Hindus have over a million different deities, or gods, little g, okay, and if you want to, you can look up uh, Wicked, Wikipedia uh, about the Hindu deities. Uh, the big ones, the major ones, and some can argue, you know, when you got a million gods, eh, what do you, you know. But their major gods are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And this statue that's in, uh, was donated by Hin India to CERN is uh, Shiva. And Shiva is known as uh, Krishna. Perhaps you've heard of Krishna Consciousness. Uh, George Harrison, if you remember him. The Beatles, God, I'm old. I remember them on Ed Sullivan. Um, he did a song, My Sweet Lord. And at the, so at the end of the song, they were singing, Harry Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. You know, so, uh, yeah. Shiva was tied in with uh, Hare Krishna. But Shiva was also known as the Destroyer. Isn't that interesting? So, um, where do we read about the... Um, where do we read about that? Hmm? The, uh, the Destroyer and all that. Well, let's take a look. Now, I'm not saying this is a definite thing. I'm not. Okay, this is just kind of like just throwing it out there. Something to think about. And if you disagree with me, that's fine. Because, you know, I don't claim to have all the knowledge. I mean, you know, the apostles, when Jesus was in the human form, walking the, uh, in flesh, walking the earth before his, he rose from the dead, um, the disciples even asked him, you know, well, well, when are you coming back? You know, when are you coming to you know, make, restore the kingdom to Israel. And he flat out told them, well, I don't know. It's, and I don't know, and the angels in heaven don't know. The Father only knows. I'm paraphrasing, but when Jesus was in human form walking this earth before the crucifixion, he didn't even know when he was going to return. So, if he didn't know something, you better believe there's things that I don't know. All right, turn to Revelation chapter 9. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it just kind of ties in, I think. Um, will Satan use the idea of CERN to get people to think that perhaps mankind's going to open up a new dimension? Um, I don't know. But I mean, when you, I've always been interested in science fiction when I was a kid before I came to the Lord. And there are a lot of movies and TV shows that kind of tap into this idea. And let's face it, people, people are so ignorant. And ignorant means that you don't know something. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means that you're uneducated in a particular field. Um, like I said in the past, 
When it comes to rocket science, I'm ignorant. When it comes to brain surgery, I'm ignorant. Um, when it comes to the Bible, I'm not ignorant. Um, I'm not going to claim to be an expert, but I'm not ignorant either. But I'm kind of wondering if they're going to use CERN as some kind of a, you know, understand, God is ultimately in control. Mankind and Satan can do nothing without the Lord allowing them to do it. But is the Lord going to let Satan fool mankind into thinking that with CERN he has the power to open another dimension, a spiritual realm, or something to that effect? And uh, those of you that ever watched SG-1, Stargate, We'll, we'll cover that later. All right, go to Revelation uh, chapter 9, and verse 1. Now, this is tribulation, people. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, if you don't know what the stars are, um, you could read Job 38. And, uh, well, matter of fact, let's take a look at something real quick. All right, let's go to uh, Revelation 12 and verse 3. The Bible interprets the Bible if you let it and you have a King James. If you've got a modern version of the Bible, it ain't going to work, people. So, you know, when they throw that label, Oh, are you King James only? Um, I'm like, are you Satan only? Or you don't like the King James? Yeah, what can I tell you? All right, what's a star? Revelation 12, 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Okay? Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Okay? Now, when you read Job 38... You can read about the sons of God and the stars shouting for joy at the foundation of the earth. What can I tell you? My opinion is these these stars is talking about angels. Okay. So, let's go back to uh, Revelation 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Is CERN going to be used to create a thing to open the bottomless pit? I don't know, but it you know, wouldn't surprise me. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. You know, a volcano would fit this description quite well. Because, uh, you know, the smoke of a great furnace. And uh, there was one year that there was a, um, a volcanic eruption. And they called it the summer... Um, I think they called it the summer that was winter or something like that. There was so much smoke in the air that it the, the, the crops didn't grow that year. It was cold. I mean, it was just blocked all the sunlight. There was no summer that year. It was winter and winter, and extreme winter. I forget what year that was, but there was a year in, in, in Europe where they had a volcano that erupted, I think it was in Asia, and uh, it just blocked out the sun for the, I mean, a year. And just the summer, just, there was no summer, and the crops froze and died, and a lot of people died. So, is this um, a volcano? I don't know. You know, it's just I'm just throwing stuff out there. Verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth 
have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which had, which had not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, what would you rather have? The seal of God in your forehead or the mark of the beast? That's a no-brainer for the Christian, right? And to them, this, these, these locust things, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. You know, I always wondered, were these uh, genetically modified creatures? I mean, let's face it, there is some weird, weird stuff that they're doing now. With uh, They're taking genes and genetics from one creature and putting them in another. They're putting plant genes and fish and fish genes and tomatoes. And uh, I, I mean, it's just some weird, weird stuff. Uh, you can go to the Jesus is Savior site and and uh, take a look at the homepage and look up the uh, GMO eugenics, genetic, genetics and eugenics page, E-U-G-E-N-I-C-S. It's got all kinds of newspaper articles about how they're just mixing all the genes of plants and animals and insects just together. I mean, they took a spider gene and put it into a goat um, a female, the goats, where they make spider goat milk. And the milk produces spider strands. And they're, it's just, it, it's some weird sick stuff, people. I'm telling you. So, and, and to them, these, these, these demonic type creatures, whatever they are, you know, these locust-like scorpion things, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And those are going to be the men that have not the seal of God in their foreheads, okay? Verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death. People are going to want to die. And shall not find it. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. They're going to have basically mm, sort of kind of uh, I wouldn't say eternal life but they're not going to be able to die they're going to want to die but they're not going to be able to verse 7 and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns of gold and their faces were as the faces of men and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sounds of their wings was as a sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and they had and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. You know, what's interesting, this lo loosely roughs, uh, roughly translates into Shiva, the destroyer. Abaddon and Apollyon. Now the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. But the New Testament was written in Greek. So you got Abaddon and Apollyon. And this right here in Revelation, why would it tell you whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon? Because obviously if the New Testament was written in Hebrew, it wouldn't need to say that, would it? But it tells you, if you're a Jew that knows Hebrew, well, you know what Abaddon means. 
But if you were a Greek, you would know who Apollyon is. You know? But this tells the Greeks and the Hebrews what it's all about. Abaddon, Apollyon, roughly Shiva. Now, I am positive that all these the so-called gods, the Romans, the Greeks, um, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas, um, whether you go to China, Japan, um, India, all the ancient gods were probably the fallen angels, the devils, the demons. So, so isn't it interesting? CERN their symbol outside the building is the Hindu god, Shiva, the destroyer. I mean, in your face, people. Now, you know, it's interesting. The uh, CERN Collider, what they do is it's, it's a big circular thing, and they supposedly use magnets to speed up these particles, and then they slam them into each other, and... They're trying to create matter and antimatter. You know, Star Trek always, their engines always ran on antimatter. Um, I mean, they've been programming us for a long, long time. I used to watch Star Trek when I was just a little, the original series. I mean, back in the 60s, I was just a little uh, troublemaker back then. Now I'm a big troublemaker, but more for the kingdom of Satan. But, um... You know, what's interesting is there was a uh, TV show that I kind of found interesting. Yeah, I watched a few episodes, you know. Um, sometimes I watch TV just to see where they're herding the goats. But um, there was a uh, program called Stargate SG-1. And this is what Wikipedia has to say about Stargate. Now, uh, Stargate production center, centers on the premise of a Stargate, a circular device, just like CERN, um, but their circular device, uh, a circular device that enables instantaneous transport to another Stargate located up to cosmic distances away. The story begins when one such device is discovered on Earth. Uh, Stargate is a military science fiction media franchise. Um, based on the idea of an alien einstein rosen bridge device, the Stargate, that enables nearly instantaneous travel across the cosmos or the galaxy. Einstein-Rosen. Two nice Jewish boys. So, you know, sort of like tying in with, you know, like black holes. You get sucked into the black hole in one place and you come out another far, far away. You know, but it's interesting that uh, they've been programming us for all this time. I don't know if they're going to use CERN to try to, like, open up a, a portal or what have you and uh, have something come out or something to go in. I don't know. But I do know one thing. I do know one thing. If, uh, if for some reason they have a, let's say they use CERN and open up some kind of a portal thing and then some interdimensional beings, I don't know if you watched, what was that um, Harrison Ford and his Indiana Jones, the, the thing with the crystal skulls. I mean, I, I don't like watching television and movies. It's garbage. It's filth. But... Um, they had the crystal skulls or whatever, and I don't know. He goes, oh, those are interdimensional beings, and this and that and the other, and I don't know. All I know is if, for some reason, something bad comes out of CERN, and it, let's say it attacks the Earth, maybe they'll use that as an excuse for the Savior to come and protect the Earth and unite all the world's religions, and we could all be one and sing Kumbaya. And, and just and love one another 
But those stupid, foolish Christians are going to get in the way because they hopefully know the following. Here's that Paul again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. And those of you that have listened to me in the past, you know this, you probably heard this many times, but I'm going to say it again. But I would not have you to be ignorant, not knowing something, all right? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that are dead, right? Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And when he's saying sleep, he's talking about they're dead. Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which we then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Okay, so the Lord's going to descend from heaven with a shout, voice of the archangel, trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If we're not caught up in the air, in the clouds, when the Lord's returning, it's the false Messiah, people. So if something comes out of CERN or whatever, and we don't fly up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air while he's returning to the earth. It's the wrong Messiah, people. It's the wrong Messiah. I don't care what Billy Graham says. I don't care what John MacArthur says. I don't care what, what Benny Hinn says. Benny the Hindu. I don't care. And oh, by the way, um, that uh, red swastika, that's the uh, Hindu symbol for good luck. Um, yeah, I know, the Nazis adopted it. But it's, you know, it goes back far, far, far further than the Nazis. From what I understand, the Hindu swastika goes back, oh, over, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of years. I don't know, maybe it's a thousand. Maybe it's more. I don't know. But uh, the... Uh, Swastika didn't bring um, it didn't bring Hitler any uh, good luck, did it? Um, I mean, you know, let's face it, Hitler was defeated, and uh, I mean, if if I don't know, I think if uh, if uh, Nazism would have been of God, I you would think that uh, Hitler would have won the war, right? So I don't know. What can I tell you? All right, well, you know, I told you this wasn't so much a Bible study. Is it just, you know, this is kind of like the Bob theory. And uh, not that I'm always right. I'm not. I've been wrong many times, um, especially when it comes to females. I've been wrong many times. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, and that's Jesus who is the Christ, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.